fast food workers. What is your sir? This is a Wendy's moment. Story one. One time this older dude rushes up to order and slams a coupon on the counter saying, I want this. I pick it up. It has menu items for KFC. I ask him, what exactly would you like to order? He instantly gets disgruntled with me for not reading his God oh no mind and shakes his finger at the coupon and said, well, whatever is on the coupon, obviously, in a condescending tone. I just look at him for a minute and say word for word, sir, this is McDonald's. I don't know what you want me to do with this KFC coupon. He looks at me dumbfounded, then looks behind me at the menu and around the store yells, oh, cow, like this isn't his first time walking into the wrong establishment, grabs the coupon and storms off. Story two, I worked at a liquor store a few years back. One day a man walks in and puts two bottles of whiskey down. And as I'm scanning the bottles, I make the usual small talk. How's your night going? The man took a deep breath and looked me in the eyes and says, Well, I just walked in on my 14-year-old son completely video chatting a middle-aged man so it could be a lot better. I didn't quite know what to say, so I told him, Oh, that's not good. Enjoy your drinks. Story 3. Dude came to drive through. I opened the window. Sir, how can I help you? I'm out of checks, he replies calmly. Not sure I follow you, I say. I'm out of checks. He says again more impatiently. Right. I heard you, but I don't know what you want me to do about it. You can pay with cash or card, too. Dude gives me a weird look, then says, Oh, this ain't the bank. And peels out away from the window. I'm a pharmacist. Story 4. I used to work at Target, and they hired a new girl, who had previously worked at Walmart, to work the fitting rooms, and by default, the intercom system. A few days after she started, she was about to make an announcement over the intercom. And I guess habit took over because she started the announcement with attention Walmart shoppers. She realized her mistake and made a good recovery with you are in the wrong store. Story five. Y'all wouldn't believe the amount of disappointed rich people who come to Panda Express and find out we aren't serving authentic Chinese food. Once a well-traveled rich woman came into Panda Express and stood at the buffet line for about 10 minutes, critiquing our mistakes and explaining how Chinese cuisine doesn't actually have fried wontons with cream cheese filling. Ma'am, we just fry what came in the bag from a warehouse in California. Story 6. Not fast food, but I was a hostess at Carabas. I answered the phone and a woman asked if were we located at such and such intersection. I told her no and gave her the correct directions. She insisted I was wrong and that we were located at such and such. I told her that I think she had us confused with another Italian restaurant chain, Johnny Carino's. She still disagreed and tried to argue. I finally just basically said that I'm standing in the building that I work in five days a week. I'm pretty sure I know the location of my physical body and to the sky up. Story 7. I worked at a Chipotle for four years and got some pretty interesting requests. But I'll never forget the time someone ordered soup. Chipotle doesn't have soup. I promptly reminded her this was a Chipotle, but she insisted we could do it. So we made her soup at Chipotle! It was the grossest concoction of bean juice, sofritas, mild, medium, and hot salsa, and sour cream. She was stoked. Story 8. I'm late, but I used to work at Taco Bell as a drive through guy. I just took people's orders, took their money, and gave them their cow, basically. So there's the usual script you follow when a customer pulls up. Hi, welcome to Taco Bell. How are you? And 90% of them say, good. Could I get a... and carry on with their order? The kind 10% of people say, good, how are you? And you would usually say something like, pretty good. Thanks for asking. What can I get for you today? Well, one time I got an outlier. I asked... Hi, how are you? And defying all convention, this man on the other end, in a country accent, responded sadly, We're not doing too well. It wasn't in a dignified way either. Dude sounded legit upset about something. I was just bewildered. I had no idea what to say. I think after like five seconds of silence, I was like, uh, well, sorry to hear that. What can I get for you tonight? The speaking part of that job is so routine that you become a customer service robot. Then this sad guy comes through and actually is honest about his current mood. And it just threw me off entirely. Story 9. I worked at the concession stand at a movie theater in high school. This guy orders a popcorn and large diet Pepsi. Comes back to the counter like 10 minutes later complaining that his soda is carbonated. I explained to him that all of our sodas are carbonated. And he asks me if we had a microwave. We did, so he wants me go into the back and microwave his soda. He wants it warm but not too warm. Went to the back and had to pour the soda into two different cups. Because the original wouldn't fit into the microwave. Truly bizarre experience. Story 10. Worked at McDonald's. We would always get people that would ask for a Whopper burger, either seriously or trying to be funny. Cue the exhausted, we don't sell Whoppers, sir, ma'am. We have the Big Mac, in response. Usually we get an O, oh, right? Okay, one of those. Until one day we had a guy come through drive-thru that asked for a large Whopper meal. An instant reply back, sir, we don't sell Whoppers here. 
we have Big Macs or Quarter Pounders or McChickens? He replied, no, I don't want that. I want a Whopper. Me, sir, we don't sell those. This is a McDonald's. The closest equivalent would be a Big Mac, but it's not a Whopper. If you want an actual Whopper burger, you need to go to Hungry Jack's Burger King. Reply, AF at Sea King Whopper Meal. Me, okay, sir, I can't give you a Whopper meal here, but I can order a Big Mac meal for you. The Big Mac is the closest equivalent we have, but it is not a Whopper. Are you happy with a large Big Mac meal instead? Him, yes, was that so hard? We give him a large Big Mac meal. And sure enough, 10 minutes later, he is back through the drive through screaming into the speaker that he hasn't gotten his Whopper burger. Edit. Rip my inbox. First of all, thanks everyone for the cake day wishes I didn't even notice. Second of all, to address the Big Mac isn't the equivalent comments. At the time, I was just thinking he was ordering the standard signature burger from the menu, of which the Whopper is the signature burger of Hungry Jack's, and the Big Mac is the signature burger of McDonald's. It didn't cross my mind to think of Quarter Pounders as closer to the actual Whopper burger because, well, to a teenager making minimum wage, I'm not going through the list options that could be the possible equivalent. All I could do was explain we don't have Whoppers at McDonald's. Here is what we sell. You don't want to listen fine. Are you happy with X alternative instead? You said yes? Great. Take your burger and pour out the water off. Some people have pointed out the McFeast and Quarter Pounder Deluxes as nearly the same burger to the Whopper. When I worked at McDonald's, which was eight years ago, QPD weren't a thing. Never heard of it to this day, actually. I don't eat at Mac as much. And the McFeast at the time was a limited edition menu item. It came and went seasonally. I believe now it's a standard menu item. But at the time, it wasn't always available, and certainly not when this incident occurred. And yes, I'm from Australia. Burger King is known as Hungry Jack's here. Because when BK first arrived to Australia, there was already a small chain of locally owned burger restaurants in Sydney called Burger King. Story 11. I worked at Duncan. And one time a customer came through the drive-thru and complained to us that the drive-thru was built in a way that made it hard to drive. She started yelling at my coworker, so I just put down what I was doing and told her, Ma'am, we cannot change the construction of the building. Like seriously, though, what did she want us to do? I just make sandwiches. Edit, thank you for the awards, strangers. I don't check Reddit that often, but it made my day. Story 12. Working at Home Depot, I got my face ripped off because this lady wanted to return a label maker, and nothing that we scanned came up in our system. She demanded a manager, supervisor, and that's when I stepped in, me, what seems to be the problem? Lady, I'm trying to return this product and you guys are telling me I can't me. Well, unfortunately, when we go to scan it in our system, nothing comes up. Are you certain you got it at Home Depot? Her, absolutely me. Ma'am, I apologize, but if it doesn't come up in our system, there's no way for me to refund you. If you can provide a receipt, I'd be more than happy to help you. Her, storms off angrily hours later, she comes back her. Hey, so! I want to apologize, me. Hmm? Her. I found the receipt for the label maker. It was from Office Depot. We had a good laugh, and I told her I appreciated her coming back in. Story 13. I worked at a bakery, and it was not uncommon, about 10, 12 X year, for guys in their 30 to 40 S to bring their dates in and place large imaginary orders. They'd look at the case and flip through some photos, then come up to the counter and be all gross schmoozy, rubbing up on their date like, baby, anything you want. You can't decide which flavor? Ma'am, put me down for one cake in each flavor. One whole cake. One donut, every flavor. Put a heart decoration on each one. After the first couple times, we started pretending to write it on scratch paper and threw the paper away at the end of the night. They'd never schedule a time or date to pick up, and if you tried to take the order seriously and get details, they'd get rude as fudge. Because I guess yelling at employees was also seen as alluring in this scenario. It had to have been like one guy at a workplace who did it and told all his friends because it was so flipping weird and I've never heard of it being a thing elsewhere. Story 14. About 11 years ago, I had just went into management at McDonald's and they sent me to practice running our location inside a Walmart. Two older ladies, probably in their 70, 80s S, came in. And while one came up to my register, the other sat down about 15 feet away in a booth. They both look and sound frail. The exchange went like this. Me. Hi, what can I get for you today? Lady 1, standing. Yes, I'll have the lunch meat combo me. I'm sorry, what? Lady 1. The lunch meat combo me. I'm sorry we don't have that here, Lady One. Oh, well, what do you have? Me. Well, we have burgers, fish, chicken. Lady One. Wait, what is this place? Me. McDonald's. Lady One turns and looks at her friend and literally yells, They don't have the lunch meat combo here! Lady Two. Sitting 15 feet away. What? Lady One. They don't have the lunch meat combo. Lady Two. What do they have? Lady One. It's McDonald's. Lady Two. What? Lady One. McDonald's. Lady 2, where are we? Lady 1 looks at me. Give us just a couple minutes, me. No problem, take your time. 
At that point, I had to step away because the interaction reminded me so much of the SpongeBob episode with the two older ladies and the chocolate bars that I was about to pass away laughing. So I had someone else take over the register and told them to promo their meals because they made my day. Story 15. Worked at Chick-fil-A for too many god-awful years. Guy walks in looking at his phone and says, I'd like the fish sandwich combo. Q confused, blinking on my part, and then I finally ask, What was that? Dude looks up from his phone, sighs, and says, I want the fish sandwich. Me. Sir, this is Chick-fil-A. Literally all we have is chicken. He finally looked up at the menu behind me, then around at the restaurant completely bewildered, turned around and walked out. I don't know how he even drove there, parked, and walked in without noticing where he was. Story 16. It's not that exciting, but in my town we have two KFCs. One of them is a joint KFC and PW. I used to work at the standalone place, and we would always have people try to order burgers, shakes, cheese curds, and other MPW products because they didn't realize that they're different restaurants. Story 17. Work at Panera. Guest calls in from car. Several people in background, all giving orders for a pickup. First order is something simple. Next order is an item we don't carry. A salmon dish of some kind. I know there are some regional Paneras that have or have had salmon. We are not one of them. So I let them know, hey, I'm sorry, but we don't carry salmon. Maybe? And the person on the other end of the phone cuts me off and starts getting really aggressive. Yes, you do. You do. They scream. But I don't. We don't. So then I'm like, hey, maybe you're thinking of another chain. We are very similar to. And I start to list off some other places. And they me off again screaming, I know you have flipping salmon. What the fudge? I ate it just the other day. And at this point, I'm just being honest with them and say, hey, man, I don't really need this attitude. We don't have salmon. I can't make the dish for you. You have us confused with someone else. There's a long silence. And finally, someone, not the person who's been yelling, says, Wait, this isn't insert some totally not Panera sounding place that I don't remember here? No. And then everyone in the car starts yelling at each other. And I hang up. Customer service is the worst. Story 18. My family runs a concessions trailer at fairs. Lots of great stories, but this one always sticks out. We have a giant 16-bay steam table directly in front of the serving counter. It's old, and some pans don't sit quite right, so there's always a bit of steam leaking out. Our trailer is built around one item. Empanadas, not really, but similar. The trailer is even called that. All the signs advertise empanadas in big letters. So one day it's like 90 o out, and sweat is just running off of all of us. We're packed, the line is running down the street, and we're eight servers deep at the window. Customer comes up to the window, after standing in line for probably 15 minutes, sees us with soaked shirts and headbands, Steam pouring out of the table, and they ask, What flavors of ice cream do you have? Edit. It's Millie's Pierogi LOL. Didn't think people would care. We'll ship right to your door, so totally check us out. Edit to the edit. Thanks for the love, Reddit. Use the code Reddit to get $5 off if you want to check us out. We pinch everything by hand and ship most of our flavors fresh. Way better than Mrs. T's or whatever frozen brand you might have near you. The coupon is good till the next Saturday. Story 19. A customer called the store with a very specific request that I did my best to fulfill. She had her husband pick it up. He returned 20 minutes later with food thrown in a bag out of its container, then threw it across the counter at me. His wife called to tell me I would never amount to anything. I was on my final two weeks, so telling her to make her own dinner was particularly rewarding. Story 20. Not a fast food worker. But I worked at a pharmacy and once had a doctor call in to ask if we do doctor's notes. The pharmacist carefully explained that this was a pharmacy and that only doctor's offices can give out doctor's notes. We only receive prescriptions. The man said okay, then after a moment of hesitation, asked again, received a gentle but firm no. The pharmacist got angry into the sky up on him after telling him no again. We received a call from him three more times. I picked up the last one and answered, this is the not John Street of pharmacy. How can I help you? He started out by asking if we were located on John Street. No, then he asked if we do doctor's notes yet again. After a brief pause where I contemplated life, I just responded, Sir, we're a pharmacy. He then proceeded to hang up on me. What an illegitimate child. Story 21. I used to manage a Del Taco during my high school teenage years. We had an older man come in once a month and drive straight through the speaker to our window. At said window, he'd look at me until I came over, start ordering Starbucks, then midway through realizing it was a Del Taco and drive off. Once a month, every month for two years. Story 22. I worked in a Jimmy John's. A dude in a military uniform came in asking about a military discount. Told him we don't give military discounts, to which he proceeded to flip out, pull out his phone, and start recording a video, ranting about how we won't give him his military discount like he deserves. Story 23. 
Not exactly a fast food worker, but I do work in a restaurant and people can get Deliveroo Uber Eats from us. A couple times a week, a driver will show up and show us their phone with an order for a 12-inch sub. Yeah, mate, that's the subway across the street. We're a pizzeria. Read the address. God knows how they find the customers' houses. Story 24. It wasn't me involved, but I witnessed it. I worked at Burger King when I was a teenager. We are short-staffed one day, and the girl on the drive through was on break, so our manager stepped in to cover her. He was pretty old and didn't have the best hearing, so most customers were pulling around to the window to talk to him as he was struggling to hear through the headset. Anyway, this one guy rolls up to the window and shouts, I want a large Big Mac meal with a cola, please! Is that so? Oh, no hard? My manager very calm, he says, My apologies, sir. That won't be difficult. He leans out of the window and points down the road. There's a McDonald's about three miles in that direction. They'll be able to help. Have a nice day, sir. Then he just closes the window and walks around the corner out of sight. I laughed so hard. Story 25. Worked at a Dairy Queen. Had a lady saunter in all frustrated bag in hand. Whipped out her receipt and without giving me much context said, There's sup to be a Baja Blast. I told her, Ma'am, this is for Taco Bell. She quickly said, My bad, and sped out of the restaurant. I think she was making up a story and did it in the wrong store. Also, the number of people who asked, do you serve ice cream, is way too high. Story 26. Don't work in fast food. This was an incident I was witness to. I go to KFC for dinner one night. The customer in front of me is ranting and raving at the clerk. I overhear a bit of the conversation, and the man is ranting at the clerk about the old NES game Castlevania 2. Customer, it was such a scam. The whole game was designed that you couldn't play it without buying the Nintendo Power Strategy Guide. Gen Z clerk, what's Nintendo Power? I could see the pained look on the clerk's face as she immediately regretted asking that. The man then launches into the history of Nintendo Power. Luckily, the clerk sees me and forms her exit strategy. Sir, you need to wrap this up. We've got a line forming. Dude sees me and has the decency to end his lecture and go wait for his chicken in silence. Story 27. Back when I was in fast food, I had someone who wanted me to remove all the sesame seeds from the top of a bun. The answer was no. Edit. Some people have discovered the solution we went with. Two bottom buns. Also our solution for anyone with an allergy, etc. The crazy part wasn't wanting to avoid sesame. It was requesting a top bun with the sesame removed by hand. Story 28. Wasn't at fast food, but while I was a cashier at Walmart, I was finishing the checkout of one woman's order when another, older one came up behind her on a motorized cart. The first woman said some simple, pleasant greeting like, Hi, how are you? To the second one, which somehow developed within the space of about two to three minutes, into the second woman's reply in the form of a monologue about how she was sorely abused by her mother as a child. But her mother was now dead, and she still missed her, even though she also severely neglected her, which led to the plethora of health problems she has suffered, starting in her teens with abnormal puberty and only getting worse from there, and her abusive relationships with men. The first woman looked at me like holy hell, and finished paying and picking up her order, and abandoned me to listen to the rest of the second woman's woes. She also had children who were all ungrateful and just never wanted to have anything to do with her, even in the throes of her worst illnesses and health issues. And some of them have completely her off. It's all her former husband's fault and her dead mother's because she, this rambling woman, not her dead mother, is too nice of a person. She is too loving. She is too giving. She loves her children too much and gave them too much. She sat on her motorized cart just continuing her speech about her life of torment and all her stuff was bagged, I'm just standing there waiting for her to pay. She won't shut up. She can't take a oh no clue. The line is backing up behind her. She still won't shut up. She's talking about how her husband's made her work when she shouldn't have, and her kids abuse her. Her son threw her out of his house for no good reason when she was just trying to help him. I'm not even saying anything to her. Like WTF am I supposed to say? I diagnose you with a latent case of narcissistic personality disorder. Intelligence lacking type? Perhaps histrionic personality disorder, except I can't because I'm a flipping Walmart cashier and not a psychiatrist. But I was a pretty scared young kid at that time and felt too awkward and on the spot to say anything. Not even a peep of ma'am, could you please pay? It only ended when the guy behind her loudly said something like, What's the holdup? This isn't the place, lady, that she finally switched to grumbling about how rude he was while she begrudgingly got her wallet out and then somehow left, and it was over. All because the first woman tried to be nice. Story 29. Not a fast food worker, I work at a dentist's office and sometimes answer the phones. People love to just dump on me for some reason. Guess they need someone to talk to, so they call the dentist? A few gems. One, 
I had a lady spend 15 minutes telling me she was going to quit her job because it was interfering with her ability to be a single parent and she gets better tips waitressing anyway. I did not ask anything pertaining to her job. 2. Had a lady call and tell me about her psychotic delusions that the police were after her and that she was hearing voices in her head. Once again, this had nothing to do with her dental treatment. 3. Had two patients who were engaged. Their wedding date was posted in the patient's chart. Always come in together, the woman will rub the guy's feet while he is getting work done. I called their number for the woman to confirm an appointment one day, and the man answered. He said they had a falling out, and his former fiancé was living at her mom's now. A month or so later, he called to tell us they were back together and the wedding was still on. This call had nothing to do with teeth or his treatment whatsoever. Just wanted us to know. There are so many more. My patients are wild. Story 30. Back when I worked at Burger King years ago, we always used to get people coming in and ordering Big Macs and other stuff from McDonald's. The cashiers just said, screw it and put in orders for Whoppers or whatever the closest parallel was for whatever they ordered. There were even a few conversion charts near the cash registers, just so we could save ourselves the headache of figuring out what to put in. It's stupid, but nobody really complained about the food they got, so I guess that's a win. The downside was that quite a few guys also treated the place as a place to try and pick up dates when female cashiers were around. So, yeah, that went over poorly thanks to management. Story 31 I worked for Taco Bell, and a lady ordered three of those Taco 12 boxes. Of course, wanting sauce. So I gave her one of those small bags that had a generous fistful of each of the sauces, meaning four fistfuls of sauce. The bag was packed because I didn't want any sass from this woman. She came back maybe 10 minutes later and dumped the bag out in front of me and pointed to one of the sauce packets that were a little crusty because sometimes they pop. She gave me a lecture about how unsanitary we are. Then asked me why we don't take the time to wipe off each individual packet before distributing them. I motioned to the sauces in front of her saying, we sell a lot of food. If this is how many sauces we gave just you, imagine how much we go through a day. There just wouldn't be time. She still huffed at me and asked me to clean the dirty packet. Since I was her sauce bad person and I needed to keep my job, I did. Story 32. Not fast food, but in the hospital. I had a patient throw her hospital toothbrush at me because it wasn't up to her standards and demand to be transferred to a better room with better service. Ah, uh, ma'am. This is a hospital, not the Marriott. We were super happy to offer her the form to leave AMA to aid in her quest for better rooms and better service. Let us know what you find, lady. Edit. Oh my gosh, thank you for the awards. I love almost all of my patients and will appreciate all the support we can get for healthcare reform in the U.S. that will direct your healthcare dollars back to your care and help us have better patient ratios and more time to spend with each patient. Suxo, story 33. This happened at an actual Wendy's. It's a bit long, but trust me, it's worth it to read. I once had a woman come through the drive-thru and try to order macaroni and cheese. I politely informed her we did not have that. She insisted we did. I told her we definitely didn't. She got angry and yelled that yes, we did. I told her, ma'am, you've been working here three years. We have never had macaroni and cheese. It's not something we serve. Would you like to order something else? She says, yes, you flipping do. I can see it on the menu board. It's right there, right in front of me on the menu. I tell her I'm really not sure what she's looking at, but we don't have mac and cheese. And if it really does say mac and cheese on our menu board, then that means someone vandalized it. She says, no, it's definitely part of the menu board and it's real and we do have it. And she isn't leaving until she gets her mac and cheese. Cue quite literally 10 minutes of this back and forth, all while she's holding up the drive through line. I finally got the manager to come over and deal with it after asking him for the 15th time, because they don't pay me nearly enough to deal with that for that long. The woman absolutely refuses to accept that we don't have mac and cheese. She also refuses to order anything else and won't move her car until we give her the mac and cheese that we don't have. We have a line of cars wrapped around the building now and everyone is pissed. It's been half an hour and the line has not moved. The manager tells her if she doesn't leave, he's going to have to call the cops. She screams she can't understand why we're doing all this. And why we won't just serve her mac and cheese when she can clearly see it on our menu board right in front of her so we do have it. And why are we lying to her? My curiosity and exasperation finally got the better of me. So against my better judgment, I exit the building, walk along the outside to the drive through order screen where this woman's car is. I tell her to please show me on the menu where it says the words macaroni and cheese anywhere. She points and confidently says, Right there, with all the conviction of someone who is absolutely sure they just proved some big, dumb idiot wrong and that they will be hailed as a hero. I look where she's pointing. I see it. I sigh heavily as a bit more of my soul passes away. I compose myself and say as politely as I possibly can, Ma'am, that is a picture of the orange slices that come with the kids' meal. We do not serve mac and cheese. 
Please drive away before the police get here. She looks confused, looks at the menu board again. The realization dawns on her, and she drives off without a word. I go back inside and scream in the walk-in freezer for 10 minutes. Eat it. Thank you all very much for the awards. Holy cow, rip my inbox. And thank you to you and Castle Reese for finding a picture of what the mac and cheese looked like on the menu board. I've added it to my post here so everyone can see just how insane this woman was for thinking it was mac and cheese. Also, to all the people saying some variation of staff is also to blame for taking so long to walk out to the car, I say this. Employees don't get paid nearly enough to deal with that cow in general. You really think they want to go outside in the summer heat, walk up to someone's car and deal with that cow up close and personal? Story 34. Not a worker, but a hapless victim of my own drunkenness. My wife and I were walking back to our hotel after a meal where I had about four extremely well-made margaritas. I wanted a mocha milkshake for dessert. And the following happens, walked up to the counter. Employee. What can I get you? Me. I will have a mocha milkshake. Employee. We don't have it here. Me. What kind of Arby's is this? Employee. Sir, this Hardee's. I completely blank out. Wife. Can you mix some chocolate and vanilla shake together? He's too drunk to notice the difference. Story 35. I worked at a small town Dunkin' Donuts right off the highway about three years ago. The highway in question is one that everybody uses to travel from the city about 100 miles to the south up to their vacation homes in the lakes region of our state, which we're in the south end of. So we get out of staters all the time who come through and ask for mochaccinos and frappes and other Starbucks cow. Sometimes the Aroma Joe's Rush drinks too. Once I had a mom that came through, only knew it was a mom cause of the screaming kids in her car, asking for some sandwich that turned out to be from the Sonic drive-ins. Those don't really exist where I'm from. The closest is two hours away. When the three of us working were all super confused by what she meant because we'd never heard of it before, she asked to speak to our manager. We told them the truth. The manager had gone home for the night, but the assistant manager was in at 6 a.m. the next morning. She demanded to speak to a manager right then and there and said we needed to call her and put her on over the drive through speaker. Both managers went straight to voicemail. We said we couldn't reach them and she screams, This is the worst Sonic I have ever been to. We're all bamboozled. Like what the actual fudge just happened. My coworker literally asked what a Sonic was. Not to annoy her or be funny or anything, but because she literally did not know what a Sonic was. So the woman freaks out even more and says, I will go to corporate and I will have this location shut down. I knew a Sonic up here wouldn't be any good. Ma'am, this is a Dunkin' Donuts. What is a Sonic? Pause. I'm so embarrassed. And it sounded like she started whimpering a bit before she drove off. I think it's funny now, but at the time I had no idea what to think. Story 36. First of all, fudge you OP for making me relive this. Now, working at McDonald's every single day at the same time, 16 o'clock this old guy would come in and order his food. Most people knew that he wanted a special order. Overcook the cow out of the patty. Started up right when he walked in. Anyway, that's not the problem. That was easy. The problem is this dude was forgetful as all hell and would demand a ceramic plate to eat on every time. So that's when we would explain it to him. Dude, this is McDonald's. We don't have plates. And he'd usually be like, oh, right, right. But sometimes he would just rant about how we should have plates. I saw him absolutely flip the fudge out because a girl stepped outside the break room with a plate of food she brought from home. I knew you bastards had plates and could not convince him otherwise ever thereafter. Keep it in the break room is the moral of the story. Story 37. Two things from my experience working at the God's Chicken Restaurant. 1. The number of people that asked for McNuggets was astronomical. 2. We had a breakfast menu. Said breakfast menu is only available from 6.10 a.m. It's now after our lunch rush and I'm managing the drive-thru. Man comes in the drive-thru and asks for a... It's slow, so he definitely gets what he ordered. Two minutes later, he comes back through and says he ordered a... But did not get the correct sandwich. I instruct him to pull around, and we would give him another sandwich, the correct one, free of charge. I get the sandwich, check that it's the right one before handing it out, hand it out. End of story, right? Wrong. Two minutes later, he comes inside and is irate because he has come through the drive through twice now and both time received the wrong sandwich. I told him that I personally check it and that he received the correct sandwich and even pointed at the on-the-menu board. Angrily, as though I had done something wrong, he points at the breakfast menu board. No, I want that number two. Edit. Wow, this blew up overnight. So two things. One, God's Chicken Restaurant is definitely Chick-fil-A. Its meaning is twofold. They're obviously a Christian organization and their food is godly. Two, unless you're going to a place that serves breakfast all day, most fast food places reuse their numbers for their lunch and breakfast menus. But also, most places that have lunch and breakfast menus also can turn their menu boards around so you don't see the breakfast options in the afternoon. My Chick-fil-A didn't. 
I think they've changed that now, but our menu boards were static when I worked there. Also, I agree with all the people that say they don't even call them McNuggets when they go to McD. I feel like a five I rolled when I say that. Story 38. Worked at a Vietnamese place which had these dope metal chopsticks people would steal. And a table actually asked me once if they could take a pair or two home with them. And they gave me a tip because I said, I bring people food. What kind of ethical decisions do you suspect me able to make? Grinned and walked away. Made extra $10 in tips for my silence and my boss thought they like liked me. But I knew they had the chopsticks. And they knew I knew they had the chopsticks. Story 39. I was the manager at an overnight shift at a burger place. Drunks were always trying to order pizza and other dumb stuff. One night, a guy insisted he wanted a pizza, so I said, all right, but it will be $100 and take like an hour. We was like cool came around and gave me $100 at the window. There was four of us there, so I told the dude to park, sent a worker to the grocery store across the parking lot to buy a Red Baron, brought it back, cooked it in our oven, took out to the dude who had fallen asleep in his car. The four of us split the other 95 bucks. Story 40. I worked at a Wendy's. Had one guy try to order McNuggets over the speaker. When I asked what size they wanted, they got all defensive that I wouldn't call them a McNuggets. Fine, fine, fine. I'll take a Whopper. Uh, a Dave's Double? Or Baconator. Needless to say, they screamed at me and zoomed off into the smog set. Worst year of my life. Edit. Holy cow, this blew up. Thanks for all the updutes. And to the 20 kind Redditors who awarded this, I'm glad my misery paid off. Story 41. I work at an ice cream shop and a lot of people come to to the window and ask stupid things. One lady had the audacity to call us and ask if we had ramen noodles. Does the word ice cream in the name of our shop give any hints to you? Some other guy also asked if we had pizza. Really? Story 42. Worked at a Japanese restaurant when I was in college and I remember one phone conversation I had with someone trying to put in an order. Me. Hello, this is name of the restaurant. Is this pickup or delivery? Customer, pickup. Me. Okay, great. What can I get you? Customer, yeah, can I get an order of orange chicken? Me, I'm sorry, but we don't serve that here, but we do have a great chicken hibachi I highly recommend. Customer, nah, how about some Kung Pao chicken? Me, I'm sorry, but we don't have that either. Customer, what kind of Japanese restaurant are you if you don't have those? I wanted so bad to say, well, we're the kind that serves Japanese food and not Chinese dishes, but I knew my boss would have been so pissed if she found out. So I just told them the only chicken dish we had was the hibachi. They were still mad and said they would find a better place to order from. Story 43. I work in a small town grocery store. Not fast food, but still retail. Once when I was first starting out at the store, a stereotypical neckbeard walked in the store and asked if we sold dildos. I kid you not! I told him that we were a family-friendly grocery store and didn't carry those items. He ended up just buying Hot Pockets and ice cream. Story 44. BK manager here have had a cracked-out conspiracy theorist tell me, Coronavirus is an invention of Walmart and Amazon to sell medical masks because medical masks didn't exist before all this. Also, same job I've seen a dude get jacked off by his girlfriend in the drive through and a mall Santa who lived at his car that had a blanket and pillow in the back seat along with like 30 empty whiskey bottles. Story 45. I had been working at a popular deli chain restaurant for a few years when this happened. At the bottom, I was working in the back when a new trainee came rushing over, absolutely bawling so I immediately knew something was seriously wrong. Jay had her stay in the back to calm down and alerted the head manager from the office so we could go tackle the situation. I get to the register and find a rather petite Korean lady shouting very loudly and demanding the trainee come back and saying she was stealing and trying to cheat her out of her money. She also kept shouting what I can only assume were strong obscenities in Korean. The manager looked at her with an expression that basically said, Oh no, she's too much for me to deal with. So he said he'd handle the line of people that was formed and I got the pleasure of dealing with Korean Karen. Somehow I managed to keep a level head and asked her calmly to explain her situation. She was screaming and yelling and rambling about how upset she was and claimed the cashier refused to give her any change and that the bagels she wanted were too expensive. I handled giving her the change and reruns her bagels up so they came out to a better total. The trainee had keyed them in individuals instead of as a pack which changes the price. It was literally her first day by herself. The whole time I'm packing up her dozen and a half bagels, she's still being pissy and is waving her arms around in a fit and bumps a customer next to her. He very politely and sternly said, excuse me, and she decided to take this opportunity to spit on him. While all this has been going on, the assistant manager had called the cops as he'd been witness to her fit from the beginning, and a cop came in right after. As I'm finishing slicing up all her stuff, the cop is trying to ask her questions. Again, very calmly, what is the problem? What's her name? Then he asks to see her identification. And she goes ballistic. 
shoves the cop, who has kept his hands TK himself this whole time, and spits at the cop. He tries to take her wrist and orders her to put her hands behind her back, and out of nowhere, she lets out this howling scream and starts trying to fight with this guy and is shoving him around. His partner comes in and sees the commotion and immediately jumps in. They're shoving into the refrigerator items and tackle her to the ground. They take her out to their police car in cuffs and come back inside to pick up her personal items that were dropped in the fray and ask me if anything else was hers, and I gladly handed them her change and bagels. Story 46. Not fast food, but still I worked at O'Reilly Auto Parts, and we frequently had people that tried to return stuff they bought at AutoZone or Advance. This was usually an understandable mistake because it was almost always a mechanic that just forgot where they bought something, or even just drove to the wrong store by mistake. But this one guy, he came in talking on the phone, never a good sign, and asked me to return something, handed me a receipt, then turned around to continue his conversation. I immediately realized that he had the wrong receipt and tried to get his attention, making me look like a banana for interrupting his conversation. Told him that he had the wrong receipt and got his phone number to look it up. While I was doing this, I overheard him say, yeah, I'm at AutoZone returning that part. So I looked through his profile, and sure enough, he never bought the cow at O'Reilly's. I tried to interrupt him again and tell him that he was in the wrong store, and he just waved me off. Obviously, he wanted to finish his conversation, so I let him. I help a few more customers, and after hearing him say, I'm at AutoZone again, I'm assuming this was a different conversation, so I loudly said, you're at O'Reilly's, dude. AutoZone is down the street. He completely ignored me. The dude spent a good 15 minutes on the phone before walking back over to the counter and said, All right, did you return the thing yet? Story 47. I work at a cafe, and cafes are understandably somewhere in between fast food and restaurant quality. But however, as I'm sure most of you will know, it's pretty basic stuff, not too fancy. But let me tell you, the amount of times we have people coming into the cafe and expecting five-star restaurant, full Michelin, Met Gala quality service is uncountable. It's like these people are wannabe restaurant connoisseurs. If you are going to a cafe, you kind of have to accept the quality of service you get. It's not fine dining on some penthouse floor restaurant in Manhattan. Chip a few blocks of your enormous ego mate, or you're going to be horrifically disappointed every time you go to a cafe. Story 48. I was taking orders at McDonald's pretty late in the evening. It was quiet at that time, so I had no customers until one dude came into the store and approached me at the till. Him, do you mind if I give you some coins to get a note off of you? Our policy is not to exchange money, but I thought fudge it. I'll do him a solid. He probably only wants like Euro 10 anyway. Me. Okay. He then opens up his bag, which had a massive bag of coins stored in bank counting bags. He stacks up 10 Euro and 2 Euro coins, then another stack, and he got about 5 stacks in when I had to stop him and say, I couldn't do that big of an exchange. Well, he was not happy. He calmly starts taking the coins back one at a time and hits me with this. You've wasted my time. You've embarrassed me terribly. You lied to me. Good for nothing. That's for your trouble. He left 10 euro stack of 2 euro coins on the counter and left. We weren't allowed accept tips in McDonald's, but my manager saw the whole situation and said I deserved it. Story 49. At Taco Bell, someone wanted a burrito with basically just beans and rice. But we don't have such an item, and it's hard to do custom items on drive through since there's no buttons for them. Basically, he'd have to pay for a more expensive burrito that has more ingredients. Take off most ingredients and sub for rice. So the drive through girl tells him to come inside to our self-order kiosk instead, as it'd be easier for him to order that way, without overpaying. Guy says, easier for you. He ended up paying like $2.50 plus tax for a beans and rice burrito, because his peach wouldn't just come inside to order. Story 50. Not a fast food worker, but I went to a Tim's once before work, and asked the drive through worker for an egg McMuffin. She didn't even bother correcting me and said, Okay, so one English muffin, anything else? Pretty sure she knew I was just dumb and forgot it was called an English muffin. Story 51. An educated man, by his account, would often come into the burger joint to get a cheap coffee and sometimes a breakfast sandwich. He would rant about men of reverence and power who would interact with him because he was smart or skilled or something. He smelled homeless. His truck had unidentifiable rubbish in the back. In the cab, he could only fit himself. Saw him parked at the Walmart across the street more than once. It wasn't just the stories he told me, it was the conviction and ferocity that made it even more surreal. Here's your coffee, sir. Looks past him. Next, story 52. When I was in high school, I worked at a local restaurant, and we always had people from all over the country coming in to eat because they were in town to get their motorhome serviced repaired. They would always ask for alcohol, and we didn't sell it because we were in a dry county. Then we would have to explain what a dry county is. Story 53. I worked at a pizza place called Mazio's in a very small town. About 5,500 people. We were just about the only place other than two gas stations 
and McDonald's that stayed open till 9 on the weekends. One day this guy calls and says he's at the hotel up the road. I start to take his order and then he mentions that he wants it delivered. I told him that we don't deliver and he is appalled. You're a pizza place and you don't deliver? No, sir. Sorry. It's a small town. We don't deliver. I'm literally right up the road and you won't bring it to me? I don't have a car, he says, clearly not getting what delivery means in the food industry. Again, no, but like you said, it is right up the road. It's within walking distance. You'll likely be here before the pizza's done, I inform him. He starts to rant about how he can't believe that a restaurant that serves pizza doesn't deliver. What kind of place are we, etc., etc. He then says, is there any place in this hick town that delivers? And I couldn't stop myself before saying, well, the hospital delivers babies and that's pretty much it. And he hangs up on me. My manager overheard the conversation and was crying with laughter. Story 54. Three from my brief time working at McDonald's. One. Man explains the plot of Star Wars on the phone, then starts talking about how his close relationship life wasn't negatively impacted by being Asian and how he owned multiple beautiful electronics. He accidentally put the phone on speaker and it was hold music. Then he asked for free coffee, didn't get any, and left. 2. Middle-aged woman asked to see my manager saying that I took her order wrong because her burger didn't have jalapenos. I had tried to explain that she'd ordered the green chile burger, local promotion, and that we didn't have a jalapeno burger. She screamed. My manager tried to explain that green chiles and jalapenos were different and they threw the mostly eaten burger in his face and started yelling at people. So the manager calls the cops while she's still yelling about how we were all going to be arrested for fraud. Cops arrive and tell her to leave. She starts yelling about how those goddamn dirty flipping spicks stole my money. Put them in jail. Not that it matters, but neither myself nor my manager were Hispanic. Just dark hair and tanned. She straight told the cop that, as an affluent white woman, she expected him to arrest us for our insubordination. I mean, the cops in the area were pretty, and he handled her with kid gloves, apologized to her. She spit on him anyway and got cuffed. Three, four people got out from a desert furry con and showed up to get quarter pounders at midnight. They were really nice, but it was interesting to have for people in fursuits chatting at the table. At least they took their masks off. Two of them were talking about how the Cuban Revolution needed to be judged by the historical conditions of its time and how this applied to Palestinian liberation. The other two made oh, oh, oh noises at each other. 